Welcome to Close Combat Boot Camp, that high risk, high reward tactic hated by many and loved by many, including myself. This will probably be my last infantry based boot camp tutorial before I jump into Chapter C and start to cover the two hit process. So let's jump into Close Combat. In this tutorial, I'm not going to spend time throwing a bunch of slides at you. What I'm going to do is walk through nine examples of close combat that start very simple and work up in complexity all the way to close combat versus AMVs. So this is a rather long video with the nine examples. So don't hesitate to use this timestamp to jump to a particular example you want to see. So what I'm going to cover here is simple close combat and odds ratios, ambushes and stealth, hand-to-hand -hand close combat, how a close combat evolves into a melee, close combat after a bonsai charge or human wave charge, concealment in close combat, withdrawal from close combat, also called infiltration, and finally, close combat versus AFVs. So without further ado, let's jump to the examples. This first example is from the scenario, a second crack at Calmont. And it is a very uh, simple example of close combat. There are two hexes here that can potentially have close combat. We're at the very beginning of the close combat phase here, the American uh, turn. So the Americans are the attackers. There are two hexes, this hex and this hex. Let's focus on this hex first. Um, there is no close combat in this hex, even though there are units in the same hex, they are in different locations. And that's a differentiation between full ASL and starter kit. In starter kit, there are really no locations separate within a hex. If the units are in a hex, they're basically in close combat. In full squad leader, units have to be in the same location to have close combat. In this case, the Germans are on the second level. They're essentially two stories up and the uh, American squad is on the ground level of this church steeple. So there is no close combat in this hex. But over here on the left in hex M4, we do have close combat between an American squad that just advanced into a building with a hero cowering behind a window. Let's see how this uh, works out. Uh, in this case, let's look at the two units. So. The American unit advanced into the build into a building, and if you advance into a buildings or wood hex, there is a possibility for an ambush. Note that if you bonsai charge into a hex, if you human wave charge into a hex, even if you berserk charge into a hex, um, there is no chance for ambush, which, which makes sense because you're seeing this wave of guys running towards you. Um, and you're most likely not going to be ambushed by them. But when you advance in, you're a little, little more stealthy doing it. So there is a chance for an ambush. Modifiers for this ambush. There is no um, stealth in Star Kit, but the hero is stealthy. Heroes are always stealthy. So the hero gets a minus one to his ambush roll. The Americans get no modifier. There's no leader. They're not stealthy. They're not lax or anything. So there's no modifier to the uh, Americans. Let's do the ambush die roll. Uh, the Americans will go first, I believe. I rolled a one. Scott rolled a four. Subtract one for the hero being stealthy. And uh, he rolled a three which means there was no ambush. There would have been an ambush if uh, the hero was not stealthy. I would have ambushed the hero, in which case close combat would not have been simultaneous. It would have been sequential, meaning the Americans would have rolled first, and if they got a kill, would have gotten a roll in close combat. The hero would have been eliminated. But in this case, there was no ambush, so close combat is sequential. So we both roll, and we can theoretically eliminate each other or have no result or or, or eliminate or casually reduce one or the other. Okay, so there, there was no ambush. So there, let's pull up the uh, chart, close combat chart here. So here's the ambush modifiers. Um, here's the stealthy modifier, 
which I just applied and it ended up not being an ambush. But if we look at the actual close combat modifiers, there are none. The only modifier that we do have is the hero gets his minus one uh, die roll modifier. And the odds ratios, we don't need to use a fancy uh, odds ratio calculator here because it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's one squad against one hero. Get this out of the way for a minute. One squad against one hero and one German hero against the one squad. There's no other combination that could exist. So the Americans are going to attack first at, uh, not first, it's simultaneous. They roll first um, at six to one. And then the Germans will roll second at one to six on the odds ratio. Now, again, the hero is heroic. He gets his minus one die roll modifier. So he needs to roll basically, if he rolls a three, he'll get a casual reduction on the squad because he'll tie the black to kill number, close combat kill number. If I roll a, a snake eyes, he'll get an outright kill. Likely not to happen. On the other side, the Americans are six to one. They need to roll a 10 to get a possible wound. Well, they would wound the hero, possibly eliminate him if, if the wound check is bad. If I roll a nine or less, the hero is eliminated. So let's do the rolls here. The rolls are already done. I'm playing a log file of a game we played like two years ago of uh, second crack at Calmont. So Scott, okay, I guess Scott rolled first, but we knew the order, but it's sequential. Or sorry, it's simul simultaneous, so it doesn't matter. Scott just happened to roll first. He rolled a seven, no result. He needed a two or a three at best. And I needed, what did I say? A 10 at least, a nine for an outright kill. I rolled a four. So very simple example. The German hero got waxed by this uh, American squad that advanced into the building. That's it for this very simple example of close combat. This is example two from the scenario, the Sang Shack Redemption. It is Imperial Japanese Army versus uh, Commonwealth Indians and Gurkha units. I don't think Gurkha is coming to play here in, in this com the close combat situation. What we have here are two, two, come on, pop up two Japanese reduced strength squads that jumped into close combat with this 447 in a one squad capacity foxhole in palm trees. So one thing you notice here right off the bat is there's no woods or building, so there is no ambush opportunity. Um, the Japanese are second line Thus, they are not stealthy. Only first line and elite Japanese are considered stealthy. Um, but the Japanese, it is a Japanese turn. They advance in the close combat. Thus, they are the attacker. And thus, this close combat is considered hand-to-hand -hand co close combat. Now, if we look at the close combat table, when it's hand-to-hand -hand combat, um, we use the red numbers here. And the uh, Japanese get a, a special modifier. They get uh, minus one, so close combat by Japanese, hand to hand only, uh, and they get a minus one mo die roll modifier. Now the Japanese have no choice how to attack the uh, Indian squad here. They have to go both squads against the one Indian squad because uh, no defending unit can be attacked more than once, so they couldn't break it up and go two to four, two to four. It has to be four Japanese firepower against four, the four British. Um, conversely, the the sorry, the Indian squad has choices. He could go his four firepower against the combined four firepower of the Japanese reduced strength squads, or he could go. Um, his one squad against one or the other of the squads at a two to one odds ratio. But considering it is hand to hand close combat, so the Japanese are looking at needing a seven and the British Indians would need either, if they went all in, four firepower against four, they'd also need a seven. 
Or if he get, went against uh, one of the Japanese squads, he would need a nine for a kill. And the Japanese get a minus one die roll modifier for being uh, hand to hand. Okay. So it's uh, no ambush. So it's going to go, I think it's going to go straight to the rolls. Japanese will go first and they will subtract one and they roll an eight though. They just miss getting at least the casual reduction on uh, this squad here. Then the British will roll and they rolled a seven that matches the one to one odds ratio needed. That is a casualty reduction. What that means is the, um, Play like an attack needs to do random selection to see which unit, since two units were attacked, the two Japanese units were attacked by the Indian unit, needs to do random selection to see which of them uh, is casualty reduced. Let's see what those rolls are. Ooh, brutal. It's a tie. So both of the Japanese squads are, are casualty reduced. An okay roll on close combat and an unlikely roll for random selection for Scott here. So he's left with two. They're good order. They're just, um, they went from reduced, Japanese reduced strength, full squads, down to half squads. And that hex is now in melee. Okay, we're continuing on with the Sang Shack Redemption. This time we are still on turn three, but it is the uh, Indian close combat phase, bottom of turn three. And we see here we've got two hexes where we have close combat going on here and here. I think we resolve this one first and then we'll move into this one. They are still pretty simple. In this case, in this hex here, we have this uh, British, sorry, Indian unit, not a Gurkha, just a straight up elite, um, jumped into this melee to bolster it, to help out with his uh, fellow squad here, Indian squad here. Um, there's no opportunity for ambush for two reasons. One, it's not a woods or building hex. Two, melee already exists, so you can't ambush someone who's already in the midst of, uh, in this case, and hand close combat. So the uh, the remnants of the Japanese from the previous example too ended up being uh, two half squads. They were both casualty reduced as a result of that initial first close combat. Um, so I'm just gonna. I, I think I played the the Indians in this one. I think I went uh, just my two Indian squads against uh, his two Japanese half squads. So it's going to be eight firepower against two firepower that's going to be a four to one odds let's pull up our odds table four to one it's hand to hand so i will need an 11. and if i recall he's got two firepower he could he could do different options here he could go his two squads against one squad his two squads against both of the indian squads or he could go one squad at one to four against each of the Indian squads. I believe he went his two squads against one, probably this four, five, eight Indian squad at a um, one to two odds. So he is going to need a, at least a six to get some sort of result. And there's no ambush roll. We're in melee, bolstered melee with this uh, Indian squad and the Indians will roll first. Let's see what they roll. They roll the five. They're gonna get. They're gonna ki end up killing both of these half squads. Let's see what the Japanese uh, ended up rolling. Uh, they rolled like utter crap. Doesn't matter what they attacked. There was no result. So those two half squad Japanese half squads are toast. Now let's move over to this hex here. Maybe let me scroll up a little bit so I can fit everything on the screen when I expand it there. Yep. Uh, oh, one thing I should note, I didn't mention this in the, the pre previous two examples either. You cannot use support weapons in, in close combat, support weapons of any kind 
even light machine guns. In the original squad leader, the, the old school original squad leader, you could use light machine guns. In squad leader and starter kit, you can use no support weapons in close combat. Not even flamethrowers, light machine guns, nothing. Demo charges, nothing at all. All you can use is the inherent firepower of your single man counters, such as heroes and leaders, which, which add one firepower. Or, uh, or squads or crews or half squads. They're in here in firepower. That's all you can use. Okay, got that aside because I have a, I have a stack of uh, support weapons here. I think this light machine gun is supposed to be uh, on top of this squad, but it doesn't matter here. Uh, these squads, okay, first, this takes place in open ground. They advanced, um, they came in from here, just jumped right into those guys, probably laying down in the grass in the field there engage them in close combat and so no woods are building no ambush capability even though the Gurkha are considered stealthy there's no there's no ambush rule in this case um, so the Gurkha are I have 12 firepower total the Japanese have three they have two from this half squad here and they have one from this wounded Japanese leader. So I'm assuming me as the Indians, I just went 12 to three, which is gonna be a four to one. And Scott probably went uh, three firepower against one of my squads, six firepower squads at a one to two. That's what I'm assuming. Now, another thing to notice here is you cannot single out a, a leader and just attack a leader, unless the leader is by himself in the hex. Similar to the the hero from uh, example one. He was all by himself, so I could attack him. But if a leader is by himself, he could be attacked by himself. Is If there's any other units in the hex, he must be stacked on top of at least one of those multi-man counters, whether it's a crew, half squad, or full squad. And he is attacked with wherever he's, he's stacked on top of at least. Okay. Uh, in this case, there's only one multi-man counter there. So I'm attacking the multi-man counter and the leader. That's three firepower. So I'm, I'm 12 to three, that's four to one. So he's probably one to two on one of my squads and I am four to three, sorry, 12 to three, which is four to one on his squad. So I should roll first. I rolled an eight, what do I need? Four to one nine eleven oh here's another thing about the Gurkha I forgot probably because I didn't mark it it's not marked on the on the map here Gurkha um when they're the attacker they can declare hand-to-hand -hand combat um it's a nationality distinction there are only a handful that can declare uh hand-to-hand -hand combat in the case of the Japanese, when they when they are the attacker and they advance into close combat, they must um, use hand-to-hand -hand combat. The Gurkha have the choice. They advance in the they're the attacker. They advance into close combat. They can either choose to attack, have normal close combat, or hand-to-hand -hand, uh, combat. Um, the historical relevance being, um, they had their uh, every Gurkha is armed with a kukri knife. You've seen those curved knives right um the historical relevance is it made them very good they're they were very good historically at close combat um so i believe i declared hand to hand combat i just didn't mark it here so i would need at least an 11 to take out this uh half squad and the japanese leader they would need what did i say if they attacked one squad they would be at one to two they would need at least a six so i rolled an eight, I need an 11. So I'm gonna take these guys out. Scott, as the Japanese rolled a an eight, and I think, what did I say, need a seven? No, he needed a six. So essentially the Japanese are eliminated in close combat and the Gurkha are triumphant. Okay, example number four here is from the scenario, the drive for Tirzong. And it is Japanese versus Chinese, I believe 1939. And the end result here is 
from three very large bonsai charges. Let's go over to this hex. We've got a whole mess of things here. Okay, we have a leader. Okay, we have a Japanese half squad, a full squad, and a leader. They have a total of seven firepower. Two plus four is six, plus one for the leader is seven. I have the leader stacked on top of this 447. The Chinese have four firepower, three from the squad, one from the leader, and then they have a minus one modifier for the leader. Um, as the Japanese, let's see, I could go seven. I'd have to go seven to four because I cannot attack. I could attack the... No, the leader is stacked with the squad, so I have to basically attack everything. So it'd be seven to four for the Japanese, seven to four, seven to four is three to two. Uh, the Chinese have a have an option. They could go four to, they'd go, they could go four to two on this half squad or four to five on the squad and leader, which would be one to two as well, or two to one, or they could go four to seven. It was four to seven. That's still one to two. So it wouldn't do them any good to go to attack just the leader and the squad. It's the same odds if I throw in the uh, the uh, half squad here. So I'll, I'll, I'll just do that as a Chinese. Chinese, they'll just go all in. The both sides will go all in against one one or the other. So seven to four that was three to two need an eight hand to hand seven did i do that right seven to four yeah three to two need an eight or the seven and then four to seven is one to two right yeah, one to two. I need a six. So the Japanese elim eliminated the uh, Chinese, but they still get to roll because there was no ambush uh, option. Uh, but they get a minus one on their die roll due to the uh, leadership here. Minus one. They roll a seven. What did I need for one to two? Six. I just missed it. So these guys... These Chinese are eliminated. Oh, I forgot the pin counter here. Let me undo that. So they're fired. They, when you're pinned, you defend at full firepower. But when you attack, you attack at half firepower. So their actual odds were two to seven. Two to seven is one to four. They needed a five with a minus one. Yeah. Not, not even close. They might have. I might have chosen to attack differently. I might have chosen just to attack this guy at one to one minus one, uh, which case I would have killed him because I would have gotten to seven hand to hand one to one. Uh, we got a partial kill, but he's a casual reduction. He's a half squad. He would have been eliminated. But these guys are gone. Then here I have. A full squad against this crew. Smoke has no effect on close combat. Uh, no ambush because I bonsai charged. It's going to be two to one for the Japanese and one to two for the uh, Chinese. No modifiers. Two to one, three to one, hand to hand, nine, and a six. Japanese. It's a partial kill. They are a half squad, so casual reduction. They're killed. Uh, Chinese on the Japanese. Seven. What did I need? One to two. Oh, just miss it. Needed a six because there is no, there are no modifiers for this attack. So they are eliminated. Okay, here we are with example five from the scenario or Tropic Lightning. Americans versus Japanese. And we have three examples of close combat here. Um, one is a straight up 
close combat with uh, normal results. One ends up in a melee, and one starts with an ambush and uh, wipes out one side before the other side gets a chance to attack. So let's go up to this first text here. We have a two American 667s six, six, jumping into clo close combat with this poor reduced strength Japanese squad. The Americans have 12 firepower, as I mentioned in previous examples. The two squads could not make separate attacks on the, the Japanese squad because the Japanese squad can only be attacked once in close combat. So these two squads are basically forced to combine their firepower to attack the Japanese at 12 to 2. So they're going to be at whopping 6 to 1. And the uh, Japanese has a choice to attack back at 2 to 12 or one of the squads at 2 to 6. But first, we have to resolve any ambush. Uh, in this case, we are in a wooden building. So there is opportunity to ambush. Let me scroll up a little bit. There is opportunity to ambush, and there are no modifiers. Um, the Japanese are not attacking, so um, and they are not stealthy. Neither are the Americans. They're, no one, nobody is lax, nobody is concealed, none of that stuff. So it's a straight up ambush, no modifiers. Let's see what uh, the Americans and the Japanese rolled. Americans rolled four, Japanese a six, difference of two, no ambush. Um, the Americans are obviously are going to go in straight six to one. I don't recall what the Japanese did. They probably did one to one to three, which goes down to a one to four on the close combat table. There is no one to three on the odds. So it's probably a one to four on one of the squads. Again, not hand to hand combat, just normal close combat. And let's see what the rolls end up being. The Americans roll. Well, I guess the Japanese roll first. They rolled a nine, no result. The Americans roll a seven at six to one. That is probably a kill. Yeah, they needed a 10 on the black close combat. So Japanese squad manning that mortar are eliminated. Let's go down to this squad, this hex here. Um, again, no modifiers. There is opportunity for ambush but there are no modifiers in the ambush attack. So let's do the ambush rolls first. Americans, Americans roll a six, Japanese roll a two. Uh, the Japanese actually ambush the Americans and there's only two squads. So it's going to be attacking at four to six, which is a two to three on the chart, which doesn't exist on the chart. So it goes down to a one or two. You can look at the chart here. You can go four to six goes down to a one to two and the americans are going to be a six to four which is a three to two so let's see what the japanese roll they rolled lousy what did they need at one to two they needed a four not even close the americans roll a nine no result either that turns into a melee neither side Got a result. That's flipped over to melee. Then this final close combat down here. Again, it's in a stone building. Opportunity for ambush, but there are no modifiers in this case. And uh, that demo charge, I believe the Americans must have captured that earlier, but they cannot use it. No support weapons can be used in close combat. Let's check the ambush rolls. The Americans roll ooh, a one, and the Japanese roll a... Five. So there is an ambush here. The Americans ambush. So they get to resolve their attack first. And they're at um, 12 to 4, which is 3 to 1. They need an 8. Um, but there was an ambush. So they get a minus 1. I don't think that had an effect. The Japanese ambushed. On the previous example, now there they need like a five final. They would have had a six, no result, because they did ambush. Yeah, I forgot the ambush modifier on this uh, hex up here, the second one I did. But in this case, the Americans um, ambush, so they get a minus one. 
and the uh, Japanese have to get a plus one versus ambush. So plus one versus ambush, minus one by ambush. Okay, so the Americans roll a seven, which goes down to a six on a three to one, which is a kill. That means the Japanese are eliminated and they do not get a simultaneous attack roll because ambush is sequential. If the ambusher kills the ambushed first, the ambush does not get to attack back in close combat. So there's three more cases of close combat, um, including straight up plain old close combat, one resulting in a melee, and one with an ambush, um, and the ambush being taken out before it can attack back on the Americans. This example six, there's two examples here, comes from the scenario failure to communicate, which is a great scenario, by the way. Um, we have played it earlier this year, uh, French, free French versus Germans. And uh, like I said, there are two close combats here. We have one here, which is a pretty standard close combat. And we have one here, which is an interesting one in this case because it involves concealment on both sides and with concealment comes things like uh, ambush modifiers, the ability to withdraw from combat and uh, modifiers to um, the odds ratio, the firepower if you choose to attack. And we'll get into that one second. We'll do the, the this, this one on the bottom first because it's pretty straightforward. But first I'm just gonna I'm just going to clean up some of this, uh, these counters on the periphery of these two, just so it's a little easier to see. And then we'll be back in just a sec. Okay, we're back. I cleaned those up a little easier to see. Let's do this bottom close combat first. Here we had a uh, German 9 minus 2 and two squads advancing the close combat with this uh, lone French squad in a stone building. I believe they advanced in from here. Not really important, but that's where they came from. So there is ambush involved here. There are no modifiers for stealth, that kind of thing. Let me pop up the chart here, not the terrain chart, close combat. Let's look at the ambush, ambush modifiers real quick. No cavalry, no bank counter, no, no vehicles, no bugged up. No one's CX, broken or pinned, lax berserk, blah, blah, blah. No stealthy, no one's concealed. But we do have leadership um, of the 9 minus 2 leader. And they, the Germans get a minus 2 to their ambush roll. So it's the Germans' turn. They're the attacker. Let's roll the German ambush first. And then the French with the Germans getting a minus 2 from uh, the leader here. Germans. They effectively roll a two with a minus three and the French roll a one. So there's no ambush here. Close combat here. Uh, Germans don't have many options. They have four, can't use the, the medium machine gun here, heavy machine gun, sorry. Um, they have four firepower, eight firepower, nine firepower, including the leader against four. So they're gonna be a two to one and the French squad has options. He can go uh, his four firepower against all nine, or he can target just this squad, or he can t at one to one, or he could target the squad and the, oops, the squad and the leader at uh, one to two, uh, four to five, which would be one to two, four to five, one to two. Um, in this case, I think I'll go. I think I'll go one to one on here. One to two. I would need a four. No hand to hand here. I'd go. I'd be need a four or a five if I went one to two or one to one. I'll just do. I'll just go against this uh, elite squad here. 
So the Germans are two to one, minus two for the leadership in close combat. Those are the only modifiers in close combat. So let's go ahead and roll the Germans. Minus two, ooh, that's deadly, that's a kill. And uh, I went one to one against this squad. The French roll, close combat, and they, ooh, a five. What did I need? One to, I needed a five, okay. That is a part, so the French squad was eliminated, but he managed to casually reduce because I tied the required number. That that ends up being a casual reduction. And since he was only attacking one squad, there's no random selection. It just affects that squad, and they are casually reduced to a half squad. And we can get rid of the close combat counter. They have taken that hex. Okay, let's pop up to this hex that has a concealed French half squad a concealed German squad, and then some uh, known squads and a nine minus one leader. Um, no, they advanced into close combat, the Germans did obviously. Nobody loses concealment yet. That kind of depends on what happens um, during the actual close combat declaration. But first we have to roll for ambush. Now, if we pull up our chart here again, let's look at the modifiers. Um, both sides have concealed units and the Germans have leadership. It's minus two for concealed and it's gonna be a minus one for the leadership for the Germans. Now the way ambush modifiers work um, in ASL is if there is any unit that has a modifier in, in the hex of the opposing side or your own side, it it applies to everything in the hex. And the the way the sentence reads is, the ambush status die roll is subject to the following die roll modifier, even if only a portion of a player's close combat force is qualified to use it. For example, one of the die roll modifiers is stealthy. If you have two squads, say I had two French squads and a French hero. Heroes are stealthy. Thus, all the French in the hex get the stealthy modifier, the minus one die roll modifier to their ambush roll. So if you have any one unit that has any of these ambush die roll modifiers apply, it applies to everything in the hex for the purpose of ambush. So in this hex, you notice we only have one concealed German squad, but all the Germans get the minus two consumer die roll modifier, even though only one of the three squads is concealed. Obviously the French squad gets the modifier, he's by himself. Anyway, that's easy to determine. So essentially the Germans have a minus three modifier, minus one for the leader, minus two more for the concealed squad being in their uh, stack advancing in. And the French get a minus two because the half squad is concealed. So let's roll up uh, ambush and see what happens. Germans get a minus three. Okay, they're at a negative two. And the French roll a two, minus two. They are at zero. So no ambush occurs. But in this case, there's no ambush. So it's a straight up close combat still with concealment involved. So let's take a look at those units again. Now, as soon as a concealed unit declares an attack, they instantly lose their concealment status and they don't get the uh, uh, concealment modifier for close combat, which is, let's take a look at our chart again, versus, versus a concealed unit, unit, the attacker's firepower ends up being half versus a concealed unit. So if any of these, either the French half squad or the German full squad, if he's included into in an attack uh, and defends versus the other, they lose the half firepower modifier for being concealed. Now, if the French half squad chooses not to attack and it survives, it retains its concealment which I think I'm going to do here. I think I'm going to, it's a long shot for the, the 
the French Hat Squad to eliminate anything, I think they aren't going to attack. I'm just going to see if they survive the close combat from the Germans and see what happens. Although I'm not sure what that's going to gain me because if they survive, they'll still be sitting in that hex. I guess they could, then they could attempt to withdraw from melee next turn. Or I could attack just one of the uh, German squads, but then I would have to lose my concealment instantly. And they would be eliminated anyway, probably, and I'd have to attack that German squad at a one to two. Yeah, I think I'll just uh, have them try to stay concealed and then not attack and see what happens. So the German squad is going to, he's going to attack, so he'll lose his concealment. We basically have 12, 13 to 2, which goes down to, remember, the, the Germans are attacking a concealed unit, so... 13 goes down to six and a half to two, which is basically going to be six to two. It's going to be three to one. They need an eight. They're going to have a minus one modifier for the leader. So they basically need a nine in close combat. And they do it. Yeah, this, regardless of concealment, with that much firepower coming in and, and the leader and them not being able to get ambushed, they were pretty much doomed anyway. This next example is from the scenario Agony at Arnatovo, Russian versus Italians. And in this situation, we already have a melee in place, and it is the Italians' turn. So we just go straight to, no ambush, obviously. So we go straight to just uh, close combat resolution. Um, very simple. Two to five for the... Italians and five to two for the Russians. Two to five is going to be a two to five. It's going to be a one to four. I need a three and a five to two is going to be a two to two to one. Let's see what happens here. Oh, Italians get snake eyes. That triggers. A bunch of things here. Okay. First thing it triggers is uh, infiltration. So anytime an attacker rolls a 12 or the defender, in this case the Russians roll, sorry, anytime the, the attacker rolls snake eyes or the defender, in this case the Russians roll a 12, the attacking unit can... Uh, withdraw from close combat, okay? So in this case, the Italians rolled snake eyes. They, I needed a three. So that kills the Russians. But they still get their attack roll unless I immediately withdraw. So I could risk it and stay in the hex and man my art artillery piece, or I can choose to withdraw to make sure there's no chance uh, of being killed. And I am going to do that. I'm going to withdraw, let's see. And I can withdraw to any accessible hex. So I could withdraw anywhere except here, essentially. Um, I could withdraw down to this sunken road or into this building, which is probably what I'll do. I'll probably withdraw to this building. Okay. The second thing that triggers is field promotions. Anytime you roll snake eyes in close combat, um, and as the first rally of a multi-man counter, uh, there's a chance of a field promotion. Let's pull up that menu here. Let's see. I think it's under miscellaneous infantry. Yeah, right here under leader creation, field promotion, 18.2. Die roll following any original two on first multi-man counter self-rally or a multi-man counter close combat die roll. So that's what I just did. 
And but these are Italians, so what are my modifiers? Plus one. Base unit was not broken. Morale level, I think it was a crew. Morale level seven. No modifier for that. Per odds less than one to one. My odds were one to four. So that's going to be one or one, two. So I'm going to get a minus two for that because I am two odds lower than one to one. So I'm going to have a minus two for that and a plus one for being Italian. So I'm going to have a minus one uh, overall uh, leadership die roll modifier. Okay. And that die roll is, what did I say? Minus, minus one. It's a two. We get a 8-0 leader. Italian leader out of there. I'm not going to pull it out. Let's just pretend there's an 8 0 leader there. And then the third thing that triggers is possible uh, support weapon elimination. So anytime um, you get a kill in close combat on a unit possessing a support weapon and the colored die roll on the close combat roll is a 1, you make a subsequent die roll on the close combat chart to see if that. The support weapon is eliminated. So I was at one to four. I need to basically roll three, which isn't going to happen. No. So get rid of that. That support weapon remains. They infiltrated, killed those guys, and jumped out before they could potentially be taken out in uh, simultaneous close combat. Okay. That's it for this example, showing what happens if you roll snake eyes. Similar thing can happen if the other, other side rolls boxcars and how you can withdraw from close combat. What happens if you roll snake eyes? You can possibly get a field promotion. We got an 8-0 leader out of this. And how support weapons can possibly be destroyed. Now, I did abandon my gun. I'm going to have to get back in there and, and reacquire it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that, but just for the show and the mechanics, that's how it works. In this example, as we go back to second crack at Calmont, we're going to take a look at a very simple close combat versus an AFB situation here. We have this American squad going up against a German Jagpanzer IV. It is the advance phase, and close combat against an AFB is similar yet quite a bit different than infantry versus infantry close combat before a squad can advance into close combat with an armored fighting vehicle it must first pass a patsy a pre afv attack task check um, leaders if they are in the hex with the squad that's advancing are immune from the pre-AFE attack task check, but they can use their leadership to influence the squad advancing in. And they add a bonus to the close combat value if they go in with the squad. But here we have a very simple situation. Squad by itself, it's going to advance in. I'm going to roll a task check and we'll see what we get. He passes. Now, if he failed, he would be stuck in that hex in 01 and he would be pinned. And as soon as the unit passes their Pat C task check, they must they must advance into the hex. So he passed, he advances into the hex, and we have a close combat. I'll just put it on the side here. Close combat between the squad and the AFV. Um, we're just gonna focus on this. So I'm not going to do anything else in this turn. And we'll just move straight to the close combat uh, turn and resolve this close combat. Um, now, the way close combat of a squad, between a squad or an infantry unit and an AFV is 
infantry always goes first. And then it alternates between the AFV and any remaining infantry until everyone is attacked, been eliminated, or chooses not to attack. In this case, very simple. We have one squad, one AFV. And in this specific situation, the AFV actually cannot uh, attack back in this case. And I'll explain that here in a second. But the infantry gets to attack first. Now, they don't use their firepower to calculate odds ratios against the AFV target. What they use is what's called a close combat value. And let me pull up the close combat chart here. Um, on the on the bottom portion of mine, this is this is one I've created for myself for Vassal, which can be downloaded from the website. Um, my website here, aslplayers.net. Um, there is close combat versus vehicles, modifiers and close combat values. Now, the way it works is you use a close combat value of the infantry units attacking the AFV, and that's the die roll you need to potentially have an impact, either no effect, immobilization, or a kill and possible uh, burning wreck, depending on how good you roll. So the close combat value of a squad is five, Close combat of a tank hunter hero is five. A crew is four. Half squad is three. Uh, a single man counter by himself is two. But if you add a single man counter with a squad, the close combat, close combat value of the single man counter only adds plus one, which is the close combat modifiers down here. And I'll show how that works in the next example here. But in this case, we have a close combat value of five for the squad. That is it. The squad has to roll five or less to have any possible chance of doing anything to this Jag Panzer. And then after that's resolved, the Jag Panzer will attack back. And I'll explain why, in this case, it's unable to attack back. So let's roll the uh, close combat. I need a five or less because that's the close combat value of a single squad against an AMV. And there are no, there are no modifiers. There's modifiers for uh, if you're a salt engineer, inexperienced, um, for the close combat value, but the modifiers for the die roll, um, if the vehicle's in motion, if it's unarmored, if there's escorting half squads or crew, meaning they're actually in the hex, um, if it's open top, if it's crew exposed or, or abandoned, immobile, or using an anti-tank mine, which does not apply to Americans. So there are no modifiers at all. It's not it's not moving it's fully armored it's not it's not crew exposed or anything like that so i need a five let's go ahead and roll no effect okay uh and i'll come back and, and roll again well let me just roll again until i get something nope no luck five in this case, the five matches the close combat value of the squad attacking the AFE, and it, so the AFE would be immobilized in this case. If I rolled uh, two, three, or four with no modifiers, it would be eliminated. If I rolled a two, it would be a burning wreck because it would be less than or equal to half of the uh, two kill number, which is the five close combat value. Um, okay, let's, let's assume there was no, uh, no effect, so the tank has the possibility of attacking back. Now, the way a tank attacks back, an armored vehicle, armored fighting vehicle attacks back is all it can use is machine guns and any close combat system or close combat attack system it may have on board, which are mostly a handful of German tanks might have it. Uh, and the only machine guns that they can use in attack are coax, anti-aircraft, if they are crew exposed, and rear machine guns. If we look at this Jag Panzer IV, it has no coax, it has no anti-aircraft, and it has no rear machine guns. All it has is a one firepower bio machine gun. It's kind of crap as far as machine guns go. Therefore, the AFE cannot attack back here. Um, Pretty safe to get into close combat with the Jag Panzer IV. If you can get approach it from the rear, it's going to have to spin around 
has no turret has a spin it's gonna have to spin around to fire at any unit getting adjacent to it which is going to add a bunch of modifiers um and then once you're in close combat it can't even attack back all it can do is drive away and that's the thing with close combat uh versus vehicles between infantry and, and vehicles is uh an AV is at the end of close combat they are not locked in melee in fact let me just delete this the AFV can basically drive away next turn that could have its own implications i recently played a scenario where i jumped into close combat with a um a sherman german infantry jumped into close combat with a sherman and the german infantry had a panzer shrek with it with them so so i didn't kill i didn't kill the sherman in close combat but uh um scott my opponent tried to bug out he didn't want to hang around and he knew he was going to take a chance and as soon as he spent that one uh move of factor to move i fired point blank in the same hex with the panzer shrek and utterly destroyed the sherman so that's a, that's the risk if the if the infantry has any anti-tank weapons and you try to drive away you could get smoked that way so um that's it for this close combat very simple uh in the scenario we played i actually i think i rolled a three and i ended up eliminating um this uh jag panzer couldn't do it in this example but i did eliminate it in this example um the next example which is going to be i believe the final example of all these close combat is going to be multi-unit close combat including a leader and possibility of anti-tank magnetic mines against uh, an american sherman i think it is so we'll jump into that next all right we're back in calmont for one final time Quite, it was quite a bit of close combat in this scenario, including infantry on infantry and infantry versus AFV. Uh, in this example, we've got this situation down here. We have several German units that have managed to get into range against an M4 Sherman that uh, spun its turn around and took some shots, but had no real effect on the uh, Germans ap approaching. I'm just going to get rid of this uh, acquisition, get it out of the way. I'm going to also get rid of the the turret marker to clear things up. So we have a 468 squad and a leader and another 468 squad over here. Um, if you remember from the previous example, to for and we're going to call this the German advance phase, and they're going to advance into close combat. Um, any non-leader needs to pass a pre-AFV attack task check before they advance into close combat with an AFV. And a leader is immune to it. They don't have to take it, but they can use their leadership modifier to influence the die roll of units they are stacked with. So let's start with, um, and you don't have to pre-designate which go in first. You can, you can, you know, see the outcome of one or the other before you decide if the other one wants to jump in. So let's just start with this one. He has a morale of eight pretty good let's see if he can pass his task check uh he does just barely so he jumps in the close combat remember if you fail your task check he would be pinned he would be pinned in this hex if he failed his task check and would not be able to advance but he did pass so he jumps in the close combat and here wolf does not need to take a task check but the squad does but with a minus one modifier. So he basically needs a nine to pass his task check. And he does as well. Okay. Not looking good for the Sherman. Okay. Now, previous example, you remember, let's jump, now let's jump to the close combat phase. They both both uh, successfully passed task checks, advanced in versus the, the Sherman. Let's jump into the close combat. Now you remember from the previous example, if you watched it, um, you, infantry starts first and then you alternate with the tank attacking back and then any infantry attacking and then you alternate until everyone's done dead or passed at this point so i am going to start with um i'm going to see if i can take it out right from the get-go i'm going to start with wolf and the squad he's stacked with the most units that can group up together to make an attack versus an AFV is two and one of those has to be a leader otherwise it's, you have to attack as a single squad so in this case i'm going to do a four six eight um, with wolf and basically 
wolf adds a so the squad has a close combat value of five and you don't use this two for the single man counter close combat value that's if he's alone by himself what you do is you add plus one for an extra single man counter so the close combat value of wolf and the squad are six but there's a minus one for his leadership but since this scenario takes place in 1944 or after the germans are able to check for an anti-tank magnetic mine um, and the way you do that is you basically make a check the squad makes a check if he rolls a one to three he has an anti-tank magnet magnetic mine and is in a position to use it if he rolls a uh, four through five they have none uh, if he rolls a six the unit is pinned and his close combat value is reduced by one so no you can't use leadership on an anti-tank magnetic mine it's just, just a straight roll so i'm going to roll for the squad and he has an anti-tank magnetic mine which is good news so what that does if we look at the close combat chart my, another minus three modifier okay so the close combat value is six five for the squad plus one for the leader and then there's a minus four modifier minus one for the leader and minus three because they're using an anti-tank magnetic mine so they need to roll a six and with a the final die roll needs to be a six and there's a minus four die roll modifier so they basically need a 10 to get a kill let's go ahead and roll oh yeah that's a burning wreck there okay um let's assume that the the squad and wolf did not get a kill okay let's assume they rolled terribly like Like that 11 let's assume that so they failed wolf whether they got the anti-tank magnetic matter or not let's assume they just failed in their, their close combat okay um now the m4 gets to attack back and if you remember from the previous example they can only attack with um, coax anti-aircraft if the tank is crew exposed or rear machine gun this uh, Sherman only has coax machine gun. It has uh, four firepower machine guns. So it's going to attack back and it is going to target. And in this case, there isn't, you don't use a close combat value. You actually use the fire, you use normal odds ratios like you would infantry versus infantry close combat. This is a weird thing about infantry versus vehicles. One side, one way uses a, this close combat value system with some modifiers. When the tank attacks back, it literally uses the firepower of its machine gun against the firepower of the squad or squads it's going up against. Okay, so in this case, I'm just going to go up against uh, this bottom squad, which hasn't attacked yet. Only only this squad and Wolf have attacked, and it's just going to be four to four. It's going to be one to one, which I need a five to get a kill. Let's go ahead and roll that up. Nope, no five. Let's say I would have rolled a five. That would have been a partial kill there. Let's say let's say I rolled a five, which is what I need for a partial kill. So they are casually reduced to half squad. Okay. Now the tank has attacked back. It can only do one attack at a time. In this case, it only has one attack to do because it only has the coax machine gun to attack with. Now this half squad, what's left of it, can attack back. So if you look at the close combat values, a half squad only has three for a close combat value now because he got uh, casualty reduced. Now I'm going to have him check for an anti-tank magnetic amount as well. So I need a one to three. Even though he's a half squad, it's still the same. You still need a one, two, or three to get a magnetic mine. And he did get one. Okay, so that's another minus three modifier. His close combat value was a three for being a half squad. So I basically need a well a six to get a kill here. And he got a kill. Half squad got a kill in the end here. The tank was kind of doomed from the beginning because of we have multiple squads getting into attack. Wolf is there. And there's opportunities for anti-tank magnetic mines to be rolled for, which is a minus three modifier to the two kill die roll. So um, 
that's how close combat versus a vehicle works. Let's let's do one quick revision here. Let's assume this task squad rolled poorly. Didn't get a kill, rolled an eight, for example. Um, would the tank get to attack back one final time? Uh, the answer is no, because it has nothing to attack with. It can only only use coax, anti-aircraft, and rear, and close defense system, which it doesn't have. And coax is the only thing it can use, and it already uses it, so it cannot attack back. And the Germans have nothing else to attack with, so close combat is over, and they're not like locked in melee. Like I said in the previous, previous example, vehicles are never locked in melee. They can just drive away um, their next turn. All right, that's it for all these nine examples, however many examples there are. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. Myself or maybe some helpful members of the channel will try to answer them. Uh, close combat is actually, actually pretty simple. The only time it gets a little hazy is if there are... Um, if there's concealment involved and maybe ambush on top of that and withdrawal. Um, if there's no concealment involved, it's fair, fairly straightforward. Close combat against vehicles is a little weird because one side uses this close combat value mechanic um, and the other, and then when the tank attacks back, it uses the regular ratios um, type system with only the machine guns it can use. So you'll, you'll get used to it the more you do it, but it's not, not it's not too bad. That's it for close combat in a nutshell. That is not a nutshell. That's a very long nutshell. Um, I like close combat if I have the odds because it's, it's very hard to get kills in advanced squad leader. Um, KIAs, that kind of thing. In the old the original squad leader, that's how you got a lot of your kills. You could, it was easy to get KIAs and kill whole stacks. It's very hard to do that in squad leader unless you catch guys running through the open or you get a critical hit um, on a on a unit in a building. But even then, it, it only targets one unit when you get a critical hit. So it's it's very hard to kill things in outright kill things in squad advanced squad leader. Close combat is one way to do that. So if you have the odds, try to press into close combat and take advantage of that thing, especially if you have concealed units and or stealthy units. Um, they can be pretty devastating if you can get in close and get into close combat. Okay, post questions below and I'll see you next time.